Find out when you can take a tour of the iconic Jakeway House at 11th Street and 3rd Avenue. Are the trees turning yellow earlier than normal this fall? And cowboy poetry returns to Durango. These stories and more on this edition of Inside Durango News, coming to you from KDUR Community Radio on the Fort Lewis College campus. You're watching Inside Durango News, Durango's only televised news magazine, covering local news and features, business updates, sports, arts, and entertainment, and up-to-date minute weather forecasts for the greater Durango area. Featuring news anchor Ashley Dixon, Monty Grushkin on business, and Jordan Alexander with sports. Brought to you by Fast Signs. More than fast, more than signs. Fast Signs. We like to mix it up here at Inside Durango News. That's why we're here in the studio of KDUR Community Radio in the Ballantyne Media Center on the Fort Lewis College campus. I'm Ashley Dixon. We're fortunate enough today to have Dr. Dean K. Thomas, president of Fort Lewis College, joining us. Thank you so much for the opportunity to first film on your campus and to be with us today. Thank you, Ashley. It's just a real pleasure to be here. I gotta say, it's one of the nicest places we've been. It's great acoustics for what we're doing today. This is a wonderful new building, the whole union, and a lot of our buildings on campus are beautiful and relatively new. I know, it's great. So uh, lots to talk about today. First, I just want to kind of go over the state of Fort Lewis College. Um, there's definitely been a lot of major budget cuts in the last few years, and before the interview we were talking about federal funding being cut. How is the college dealing with that and moving forward? We came out with a 10-year financial plan and uh, our vice president and uh, associate vice president for budget have done a great job. We are financially stable. Uh, we're in good shape. Uh, we watch our money. We're careful about how we spend it, but we're financially healthy. And I'm sure, as many other institutions, it's something that's always on your mind, especially it sounds like a 10-year strategic plan. You've got to fail safe for a long time. Well, we have to watch it every year. Yeah. And of course, with the uh, cuts in state funding, particularly, we have had to uh, look for private support. So we need every dollar we can get. Uh, and we've had a lot of good help from supporters, too. Yes, and it's a good community for it as well. I know the community is always stepping up to do fundraisers and help the college out however yes. they can. This community loves Fort Lewis College. Durango is such an exciting adventure town and so beautiful, and uh, the relationship between Durango and Fort Lewis College is really good. I love the city council, I love the people who retire here. It's, it's a great place to be. That's good. Um, another thing that's a new going on at the college is some new buildings. I know you just recently broke ground on a new science center. I'd love to hear more about that. It's our geosciences, physics, and engineering building, and uh, we are very excited. Engineering is one of our fastest growing programs. Wow. And the beauty of it is that it's a professional program within the context of a public liberal arts college. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that our engineers come out with an understanding of their place in the world, the context in the world. And then to add to the beauty of this year, not only are we building the new building, but uh, our featured scholar just announced today, this is hot off the press. Oh, breaking news. <laughs> is Dr. Ryan Holland, a physics professor and the chair of physics and engineering. Oh, wow. And what's even better is he's from Minnesota. Oh, which is your home yes. state. So you've got a little state pride going on there. So he's a Viking <laughs> and a Skyhawk. Nice. And actually just talking about your faculty, and we were chatting about this before the interview, is you have what's really unique is you have small class sizes, a very dedicated staff, and when you compare it to a bigger university in a city, you're getting the same education, but you're getting it in a much more intimate setting, and I think that's yes. what makes Fort Lewis so unique. Yes, we offer a personal education. Mm -hmm. Our students get to know their professors. They do undergraduate research, which you don't find many places. Exactly. And they come out with uh, a personal recommendation for a job or for graduate school. Yeah, or internships that lead yes. to jobs. I know I've heard lots of Fort Lewis students who graduate mm -hmm. and then their internship turns into a position here in Durango. That's exactly right. 
So talking about increasing the student population and encouraging more students, mm -hmm. both in-state and out-of-state, to attend Fort Lewis, I know you guys do a lot of really strategic marketing and branding. Yes. So what are you starting to do to increase awareness about the school and to increase enrollment? Well, we advertise. We're in the, the Denver airport. We're in ski magazines. We're in cycling magazines. We are in academic areas because our, our, our segments uh, we have a commitment to Native American education, but we're also Colorado's only designated public liberal arts college. We are a very active student body with the uh, number one cycling team most years, mm -hmm. uh, very good soccer, uh, excellent basketball, uh, uh, even coming into our own with football. Yes, and I know that there is a very big football game coming up for homecoming. Our homecoming game will be October 16th. That's a Thursday, which is unusual, uh -huh. but it will be against Mines, broadcast on CBS Sports. That's and national. I know, and that's very, because that's never happened no. in Fort Lewis's history. It has not. So I, I'm anticipating that college students here are going to go a little bit over the top. I'm expecting some probably pretty rowdy fans for that game, are you? Oh, our students are never rowdy, <laughs> Ashley. They are just enthusiastic they're and passionate. spirited. Exactly, they're, they're spirited. Well, they that's will. A good thing. We will have a wonderful time. Nice, and it will really be one of the first times that Fort Lewis has mm -hmm. been in the national spotlight, correct? That's right, and the more visible we are in terms of our value, our personal attention, our small classes, our caring faculty, the more students we'll get in the door. And we'll just have a, a great time and uh, promote the value, the importance of higher education. Yes, I'm sure all of Durango will be tuning into that game and they'll tell everybody else to tune into CBS as well. Um, so one last thing just talking about, and we touched about it earlier in the interview, was Fort Lewis's relationship with Durango. Where do you see that heading and are there any initiatives in particular that you have on the horizon? Oh, well we have the Smith Sports Complex, the four fields right out here that was a partnership with the city. Uh, we have the softball fields that we, where we are partnering. Um, it, uh, the city and Fort Lewis College do so well together. I have never seen a more positive relationship. Yeah. And I appreciate that very much. Yes. And in sometimes, I mean, you see colleges and communities where they're in a bubble mm -hmm. and they feel separate from the community. Yes. But it seems like it's a very symbiotic relationship with Fort Lewis and Durango. Durango people understand that we are very important to economic development. In Durango, in southwest Colorado, mm -hmm. uh, even into New Mexico and Arizona. And they appreciate it. And I get a lot of wonderful comments about that. That's good. So you know you're doing your job and obviously Fort Lewis is only getting more popular both on the state and national level. That is true. So starting up another school year, how have the first couple of weeks been so far? They've been fabulous. We are pushing our students to finish in four. Wow. And in terms of that, we had a banner year last year. We graduated over 800 students with bachelor's degrees. That is the most in our history, too. Really? Great. So we are moving students through and saying, get your education, explore, but finish in four. And I'm sure that's music to parents' ears as well. Yes. Four years and then you're done. No seven-year programs here or anything no, like that. No, uh, We're really encouraging students to move through and go out. Nice. So for people that are watching this interview and they're interested in learning more about what's happening currently at Fort Lewis College, is there a good place on the website for people to go to kind of see the current state of what's happening? Oh, absolutely. Just go on our website and you will find all the activities, the calendar. You can go to admissions and see how to apply and uh, go to the athletics page and learn about the Skyhawks in all of their wonderful sports. Uh, lots of... Uh, Welcome. We've revamped the website. It's very welcoming. User-friendly. User-friendly. Great. Well, that's awesome. And I have to say, being here in the KDUR studio, it makes me miss being in college a little bit. You can come back for a second degree. I, you know, uh, I, might, I might have to think about you it. You come and I'll work with you. We'll you're, never too, you're never too old to keep learning, someone once no, said. No, you're not. Well, we really appreciate you taking the time to stay with us today. And always great to hear about what's happening at Fort Lewis College. So. Thank we'll, we'll you, Ashley. We'll be the Skyhawks in that homecoming game. Yes, we will.
Next up, our business news with Monty Grushkin. Thanks, Ashley. Great to be at Fort Lewis, especially at the start of the fall semester with all the new students on campus and in town. One Mancus man started his fall by winning a $70,000 front-end loader from the Bobcat Company earlier this month. Steve Klumker received the loader after winning a Bobcat, Bobcat essay contest that asked entrants to answer the question, how does Bobcat make you unstoppable? His answer was selected the best out of 12,000 entries nationwide. Bobcat held the contest to celebrate production of its one millionth loader in 2014. Bobcat Company executives surprised Klumker with a special edition one millionth loader at an awards ceremony held September 3rd at Target Rental of Durango. That's where owner Jim Duke holds the local Bobcat dealership. Klumker has been, had been lured to the Durango dealership thinking that he was only a finalist, not the actual winner. Klumker said he just wrote about why he liked the Bobcat and didn't really expect to win. Well, 40 years of telling is a lot of telling uh, and that's kind of uh, how I began my article is uh, it's uh, I, I feel unstoppable in just the things that the Bobcat have been able to uh, um, bring to my family and uh, and my business. Uh, uh, it's just an incredible machine. Uh, they have so many different attachments. There's just nothing that you can uh, do. It just makes you unstoppable. Uh, from post hole diggers to forklifts to trenchers. And I can just go on and on. I think there's something like 80 plus attachments or something like mm -hmm. that now. Clunker operates the Lazy K Bobcat service in Montezuma County. He's a second generation Bobcat user. His father loved the machines so much a Bobcat graces his grave. The Bobcat company has been in business since 1947. It's headquartered in North Dakota and manufactures compact equipment for construction, agriculture, mining, and industry. Next, the weather. I'm Scotty Smith with the weather. Did it seem like the trees in Durango turned colors earlier this year than they have in the past? Later in the broadcast, a Colorado State Forester tells us why. Your up to the minute weather is next. Inside Durango's top news stories have been brought to you by the Durango and Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad. It's America's train. Everyone's on a budget, and we have several programs that are available that will meet those needs so that it does fit within your budget. We're family here. They, they like the way they're treated. They like the way we present the numbers. There is nothing under question. They know exactly what they're getting. The quality of the Honda is number one. You want to get into a car that you know you can depend on for years and years, and it's not going to break down. It's going to be what it's presented to be. This is the story of a company that has its roots in Southwest Colorado. A story about two college friends who founded a local business, of their families and the families of their staff, and of generations to come. It's about the concerns we hold, the passions we share, and the bonds that unite us. We are the Wells Group, and for three decades, we've been proud to be a part of the Southwest Colorado community. We treat all of our guests like family here with courtesy and respect, and we want to make sure that we put their priorities first. Taking great care of our guests builds lasting relationships, and that's what we aim to do at Durango Motor Company. We have an open door policy here, so there's no games or gimmicks, it's just people talking to people. We want to be here for the lifetime of the vehicle and the guest. We're here to be in business and take care of you for as long as we possibly can. This portion of local news has been brought to you by Alpine Bank. Locally owned, locally operated, Alpine Bank. You're watching Inside Durango News, broadcasting from the KDUR studio in the Ballantine Media Center at Fort Lewis College. The Durango Cowboy Poetry Gathering is coming up soon in October, and I have Jeff Mannix here to tell us about this year's schedule of events. But first, I want to bring it back a little bit for those who might not know, what is cowboy poetry? Well, um, I could probably do a couple of hours on that. That's one of my favorite little subjects about how Western history was passed down to us. And it was not passed down to us as an academic study like most things, most history was. It was passed down through stories and songs and poems 
And I mean, these guys spent hours and days on end looking through the ears of a horse. Mm -hmm. And in the evening, they just kind of made up stuff just to get entertained. So this was stuff around the campfire, going down the trails, those kind of yeah, stories. Yeah, and ranch life. Ranch life is different. Yes. Ranch life is hard and wonderful and, and horrible at the same time. And, and from all those experiences come Become wonderful stories, and if you don't make fun of it or you don't take it really seriously, which is the way cowboy poetry and music goes from one side to the other, it could get nuts. Yeah, uh, and it yeah. could get lost. And it could get lost, and that's the biggest. And that's the thing that I say I could do hours on because it's the only history that we have about the expansion, the westward, western expansion in this country. Yes, and so rooted in southwest Colorado in particular. And I know that this festival in Durango has been going on for years. Yeah, 20, 26 years. 26, so this is the 26th annual this year. Yep, we're the uh, second oldest cowboy poetry gathering in the country. That's some good bragging rights. <clears throat> yeah, it is. Uh, Elko, I have to give a plug for Elko, Nevada, was the first a couple years before us, and we kind of copied them. Yes. And now they copy us a little bit because we've achieved a level of uh, sophistication, a uh, level of style, a level of, I don't know, I hate the word class, but we're a classy organization. Yeah. And the people that we invite to Durango are the top of the, he the heap of all of the performers in this industry. And people come from all over the country, too, to take part yeah. in this festival. So tell us, what are the dates for this year's? Uh, it all begins on October 1st, goes October through that big weekend. Okay, great. Um, it'll sell the town out. We have the uh, largest motorless parade in the state of Colorado, maybe in a lot of different states in the West, but certainly the state of Colorado. Very that's fun. Saturday morning. Okay, and that's right <coughs> on Main Ave, I take it? Yeah, right on Main Ave, so everybody, can, all the mer merchants can complain about it. Great. And then um, <coughs> the Strader is our, the Strader Hotel is our headquarters. Okay. So all the common rooms in the Strader and all over town, the Arts Center, galleries, uh, we have con all day Saturday constant music and poetry in all these different venues that goes on all day long that's free. And I try to encourage people, especially people with kids, yeah. when you start buying tickets, you know, for three kids and two adults. Well, it gets pricey. Yeah, you're going to be, um, it's like going out to dinner. And so here's a way to go and uh, see it all. For free, the night shows are ticketed, of course, and that's the best we have to offer. Yeah. The day shows, uh, most of the night performers come from our observation of, the, of their performances during the day. We invite some of them back for the next year. So I'm mean, just looking at the schedule briefly, it's packed. It's a full weekend mm. of events. So you're going to be busy if you come into town all the way from that Friday to the end of the weekend, right? Right, from Thursday. Thursday to the yeah. end of the week. <clears throat> we have a really interesting, on Thursday night is our premier night. We always invite a big celebrity on Thursday night just to kind of push our bubble up to the top <laughs> all the time. Might as well, you have to. Yeah, and just something to make us famous. And <laughs> uh, this year, we've, uh, we're going to be made famous by somebody that no one's ever heard of, uh, Tom Russell. And Tom Russell is one of those guys like Willie Nelson was before Willie Nelson started making records oh, same style. he wrote all the songs for all the guys who made got famous and made those songs famous and tom russell is like one of the behind the curtain uh, um, songwriters and uh, um, pal to everybody and and he he tours a little bit and i'm sure he has plenty of stories as well oh god i can't imagine well, so it's a full weekend of events. Where can people go to get more information if they want to participate? Uh, well, you know, a website, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Durango Cowboy Poetry Gathering. Durango Cowboy Poetry yeah. Gathering dot com. We hate acronyms. <laughs> well, it's cowboys easy can't to keep, remember. And cowboys can't keep up with acronyms. Durango Cowboy Poetry Gathering dot org. Dot org. Okay. Yeah, we're an org. Great. So that's coming up in September. Jeff, thanks so much for joining us. We've got more Inside Durango news right after this. This portion of local news has been brought to you by Alpine Bank. Locally owned. Locally operated. Alpine Bank. Chanda's Jeep has a busy schedule. She runs an audiology practice in Durango. It's not easy running your own business. 
That's why she chooses to bank at Alpine Bank. Being able to make business deposits without stepping out of the office saves time. And she loves how the Alpine Bank mobile app makes it easy to keep track of personal finances from anywhere, giving Chandis the freedom to focus on what really matters. Alpine Bank in downtown Durango and Three Springs. Durango Party Rental is the source in the four corners for weddings and special events. We offer the largest and highest quality selection of tents and events equipment in the area. Our full-service professional event consultants can provide the care and attention to detail that result in a flawless event, so you can relax knowing you are in good hands. Be sure to check out our incredible private event venue at LaPlatte Spawn. Give us a call or visit our website to see how we can help you put it all together perfectly. Welcome and come in. Open the door to the craftsmanship of home building at the Durango Area Parade of Homes, September 26th through 28th. To our beautiful and unique homes, and make Friday evening a date night with the Homes Under the Stars party. This year's event includes special events like the Kids Lego Building Contest, a container gardening contest, and a poker run. There's something for everyone at the Parade of Homes this year. Make September 26th through 28th a weekend to come in, look around, and celebrate some of the most elegant homes in Durango. The Durango Holiday Inn would like to invite you to the Sporting News Grill for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Featuring a full-service restaurant and bar with 11 HD TVs, it's a great venue for family and sports fanatics alike. The Sporting News Grill. Stop in and let us show you our game face. This week's sports news from Durango and further afield is brought to you by Mercy Regional Medical Center. Inspiring health. I'm Jordan Alexander, here with your sports news. As we are up at our campus in the sky for this special edition of Inside Durango News, it only seems fitting to keep today a Skyhawk-themed update. The Fort Lewis football team traveled west to take on University of California Davis in the first of their two out-of-state exhibition games. FLC held the first quarter scoreless until Aggies converted a 21-yard field goal with just 29 seconds left on the clock. UCD extended their lead throughout the game, pro proving the difference between the Division I team and their opponents. Kicker Kip Castana gave the Hawks their first taste of points through a 37-yard field goal late in the latter stages of the second quarter. UCD answered with five touchdowns before FLC junior quarterback Jordan Doyle found the end zone with 26 yards out. And even a last-minute touchdown from wide receiver Andrew Johnson failed to claw back enough points for a Skyhawk victory. Final score, Fort Lewis College 17, University of California Davis 52. Now the Hawks' next challenge is against Oklahoma Panhandle State this coming Saturday. Fort Lewis Golf began their season with a two-round score of 620, which leaves the men's team in 13th place at the Colorado State Pueblo Samuel Prowl Insurance Wolf Pack Men's Golf Tournament. New head coach Guy Begay saw Lucas Laudick tie for 44th individually with a 1-5-3 over 36 holes. Josh Woodworth scored a 1-56, leaving him in 52nd. Mitch Donnellyus, 1.559, puts him tied for 57th, and Dylan Washburn is tied for 59th with a round 160. The third and final round at the Walken State Golf Course is still yet to be played, but we will have the final scores for you on next week's show. The brand new women's golf program started their first ever competitive tournament on Monday with a shaky team score of 401. Jessica Tolson shot an 85 to lead the Skyhawks through the first round, followed by Lauren Trulio and Miranda Crawford, who both scored 103. Lindsay Blythe completed the foursome with a 120 to put her 80th out of the 81 player field. Not the strongest start by Fort Lewis Women's Golf, but we have to remember it's very early days for the new program. FLC Volleyball bumped set and spiked their season opener, but not in the fashion they would have hoped. The team traveled to Wichita Falls, Texas for bouts against Midwestern State, Northwestern Oklahoma State, Cameron, and Washburn. On Friday, the Lady Hawks fell 3-1 to Midwestern, but fought back to a five set thrilling win against Northwestern Oklahoma. A mixed opening day, but that was all the joy the Skyhawks took from their weekend, as on Saturday they were beaten by both Cameron and Washburn outlets. 3-1 in the first and 3-0 in the second. A tough weekend for Hawks Volleyball, who need to rebuild after losing standout seniors Jenna Kinzer and Kristen Steffen. Despite the losses, senior outside hitter Ashley Wells earned herself Fort Lewis's weekly honor of the Skyhawk of the Week award through her average 2.25 kills per set and a team-high 38 points. And the sports keep coming. Next up, we have FLC Cross Country, who competed in the Adams State University Joe Vigil Open in Alamosa. The men's team placed fourth with the women's in fifth. The Hawk men were led by national championship qualifier Christian Gearing, who ran a 26 minute and 39 second time over eight kilometers to finish in 10th place overall. Maddie Kruger led the women's team, placing 13th, unlucky for some. 
with a 5K time of 19 minutes and 19 seconds. Adam State took first place in both the men's and women's team standings. And that's it for Skyhawk News. Now, I deliberately left out soccer as Inside Durango TV now has its very own soccer exclusive show called Back of the Net. So stay with IDTV for all the latest soccer news from college to high school to youth soccer. Up next, an interview with Skyhawk Athletic Director Gary Hunter. So I'm here with uh, Fort Lewis Athletic Director Gary Hunter. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. So another season begins. It does indeed. We're very, very excited. This is the uh, most favorite time of the year for me when we get the kids back on campus and get the fall sports started. Yeah, you get all that preparation. You get to now get to go out there and watch it. We do indeed. We finish up in May, and that's uh, a long, busy three or four months during the summer mm -hmm. to get ready. But uh, this is this is the fun part. Yeah, definitely. Now we've got two new programs. So we're going to talk about that today. We do indeed. We have uh, added this year a women's golf program. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we've also added women's track and field, and uh, they'll be competing in the spring, and the women have already competed once uh, yeah. this fall, so we're excited about both of those sports. Excellent. So with women's golf, we had a club program before. We did. And have we just transitioned those players into a varsity program? Have we gone recruiting? Both, yeah. Jordan. Uh, we started a program and helped with them in some coaching areas in the last couple years, and then when a small amount of money became available, uh, we transitioned it over and we are actively recruiting. Mm -hmm. So if there are any young women uh, at, on college campus or in Durango that are interested, please let us know. Excellent. We are recruiting as we speak. <laughs> and they're competing, I think they're competing right now, aren't they? They are. Yeah. They're competing in the RMAC and uh, the RMAC's got a good women's golf program as mm -hmm. well as a good men's group program. And so uh, we don't expect them to compete for a championship for a few years, course, but yeah. they'll be competitive. Mm -hmm. Now in terms of the track and field program, we have the track around um, Ray Dennison Memorial Field, but it's not really ready for competition as you such. No, in fact, it's probably the worst track in uh, the state of Colorado. <laughs> One of our goals, uh, Jordan, is to uh, start a campaign to put uh, new artificial turf mm -hmm. for football, lacrosse, and all the sports, including soccer and mm -hmm. inclement weather. And in that program would be a new eight-lane uh, artificial surface track. But until such time as we can get that done, we'll compete off campus, yep. either at the high school or Ignacio, or we'll certainly compete uh, in competitions on other campuses. Okay, so we've got two new women's sports. We do. Now, this plays into Title IX and stick into that legislation. Uh, it does. Can you tell us a bit about, about it that? It does. Uh, when I got here three years ago, our, our numbers were down and still are a bit. Uh, there are very few schools that are totally in compliance with Title IX, mm -hmm. meaning that the federal government mandates that if federal monies are used for a program, there has to be equal opportunity uh, for both men and women. And uh, most schools, including us, uh, have more men in our varsity programs than we do women. And, uh, but we're trying to remedy that, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the ways we can do that is there has been interest in women's track and field and w expressions of interest in women's golf, so uh, we were able to add both of those to help us with the numbers. Yeah, and is there any programs that you foresee in the future, maybe a few years down the line, that you'd like to add in as well? There are uh, some other programs. Uh, there are some men's programs mm -hmm. that I would like to add. Uh, I know that men's lacrosse mm, is popular yeah. on campus. would love to do that. But until we get the female numbers up, we'll probably uh, take a look at that first. There's been some discussion, uh, what with the pool that we have, mm -hmm. that we might uh, start a women's uh, uh, swimming, swimming program team, yeah. sometime in the future. So we'll take a look at all of those in the next uh, few years and uh, see what we can do. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for joining us today, and hopefully that brings everyone up to speed on Skyhawk Athletics. Um, so thank you very much. Thank ben. you, Jordan. My pleasure. Now make sure we get down to Fort Lewis, or up to Fort Lewis, it's up in the sky, and we can see all the different athletic events throughout this season and through the spring season. Thanks again to Gary for joining us, and that wraps up our sports news. I'm Jordan Alexander. This week's sports news from Durango and further afield is brought to you by Mercy Regional Medical Center. Inspiring health. Welcome to the Irish Embassy Pub Durango. We import the majority of our products straight from the Emerald Isle, and let's get it right. You want your Guinness directly imported from Dublin. You want it stored at precisely the right temperature. And you want the pour to be a matter of taste and science. You want to pull with the patience and precision that it deserves. And if that wasn't authentic enough, you want to enjoy it in a pub where the shelves are stocked with 24 different kinds of Irish whiskey. Yes, you want the true Irish experience. Come visit us at the Irish Embassy Pub Durango. 
It's full steam ahead at the Durango and Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad. Enjoy a historic trip through southwest Colorado's rich scenery with daily train excursions through the spectacular San Juan Mountains. See the world-famous 400-foot drop at the High Line. Relax as you chug along the Upper Animas River and spend an afternoon in the historic mining town of Silverton. Stop by the depot or call 247-2733. Get more information on our website at durangotrain.com. Don't miss this year's Battle of the Badges, Saturday, September 13th at 2 p.m. Durango's own police department and fire and rescue go head-to-head -head in their sixth annual softball game. Admission is free. Food and beer garden on site with lots of wonderful local items in the silent auction. All proceeds to benefit Southwest Colorado Special Olympics. So bring your baseball cap and head on down to the Durango La Plata County Fairgrounds on Saturday, September 13th at 2 p.m. to watch Durango's best in action. See you there. Next, the business update, brought to you by the First Southwest Bank and the La Plata County Economic Alliance. We're here at the KDUR Community Radio Station offices at Fort Lewis College. I'm Monty Greshkin, and you're watching Inside Durango News. Welcome, Gigi Beatty, who is the Executive Director of Continuing Education at Fort Lewis College, and she's here today to tell us a little bit about a new program that we're launching. Yes, I am, and I am very, very pleased, Moni, to have a professional development program to offer our community. It's a collaboration between Fort Lewis College Continuing Education and the Economic Alliance. Uh, we have done research nationally as well as regionally. The Alliance sent out a survey last fall and asked all of our local businesses. For, actually, it went to 48 companies which uh, employ over 8,000 people, and they indeed agreed with the national research that said we need some skills for our employees and for our managers that are not being necessarily presented in a college degree or even a master's degree. Very interesting. So what kind of skills are we talking about? Well, they're called soft skills and what that means is mm. that you're able to navigate uh, both internally and externally within a company uh, for the sake of the company and become a better part of the company with regard to teamwork, emotional intelligence, conflict management, communication is huge. And uh, so what we're finding is that people are technically adept because of a lot of the technical trainings that we've been all been in, sort of immersed in for the last 10 years. But really uh, soft skills or communication, people skills if you will, have been sort of on the back burner and for good reason. Right. But now we're needing to enhance those so that our organizations can perform better. So how does, um, is this something that you're offering to companies and they sign up and send their employees to the program or can any individual in the community participate? Really any individual can because it's CE and for Fort Lewis's intent to serve the community. Okay. Uh, we're targeting the businesses because that is our most urgent need and they're the ones that responded to the survey and said they wanted the trainings and so we're hoping to get a couple of people anyway, maybe five from each business. But if a company wanted to have an internal training like Durango Mountain Resort for example, okay. uh, we could do that as well. So are you um, what, how does the program work? When is it offered? Can you share price points with us at this stage? Sure, sure. We're launching it this fall. Uh, we have two tracks, the employee track, which is uh, titled How to Become a Valued Employee. Okay. We have a manager track that is titled How to Manage with Respect and Reason. And they are 14-hour uh, and 16-hour trainings, respectively. One is $1,100, and the, uh, and the manager training is $1,400. And, and that is over the course of how, how much time? It's, each training is one whole Saturday training, plus uh, four and then five Wednesday evening trainings of two hours each. And this is the first module, Monty, because we wanted to offer a certificate component of this. Okay. Individuals are looking for... Um, Credentials that go beyond a college degree or even a master's degree, something that shows what they're calling a, a uh, ability or a competency in the workforce. Right. So we are also offering a certificate component in the program. And so if an individual takes three modules, this fall we're launching the first module of the certificates in both the employee and the manager tracks. And so you mentioned that this was done based on some national research. Will these accreditations or certifications be recognized outside of our community? Well, fortunately, thanks to Fort Lewis College being an accredited uh, college, we have that sort of reputation. And it just depends on the employer. Um, okay. There really is not an accrediting body for 
uh, professional development, but I'm excited to note that one of the team members that, of the consultants that are presenting this to our community developed the professional development certificate program for Duke University. Oh, that's very exciting. And so can you share yes. who that is? Sure. Her name is Betsy Upchurch, okay. and she's one of the owners of P4 Consulting. Okay. That's the group that was selected mm -hmm. out of many capable consultants in our area. And they also, she also will be working with Mark Rowland, who is an, has a master's in experiential education and teaching and Ellen Babers, who worked with the oh, sure. U.S. Olympics for uh, 10 years, both the winter and summer games in high management trainings. So it sounds like a very professional program. I'm excited that this is going to be offered in our community. If folks want to learn more about it, how can they get more information? They can go to CE's website. That's uh, www.fortlewis.edu forward slash or backslash continuing ed and there will be a tab there for professional development, or they can call me directly at 970-247-7385. Wonderful. Well, Gigi, it's been a pleasure having you here today. It sounds like an awesome program. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to hearing about the success of the program. Thank you so much, Mike. From the remodeled Jakeway House built in 1888 to modern-day million-dollar mansions, the 2014 Parade of Homes will showcase 15 properties that represent the best and most talented contractors in La Plata County. The Parade of Homes will offer tours from September 26th through the 28th. These are no ordinary homes either. Building contractors had to apply to be a part of the parade and their entries will be judged by independent contractors in categories that include best kitchen design to bathrooms. Perhaps the most coveted award, however, is the People's Choice Award. That means that you get to vote on your favorite house when you participate in the parade. Home Builders Association Director Lisa Laughlin says the event offers potential homeowners an opportunity to see the work of local contractors and to get inspired by materials and design ideas. It's, it's, it's builders, it's uh, subcontractors, it's lenders, it's the whole building community here in Durango and we have a lot of talent. Uh, there's a lot of good builders, there's a lot of craftsmen, uh, there's a lot of artisans in this community, and in general, uh, the homes that are featured in the Parade of Homes uh, showcase a lot of that work. I think the public really likes to come out too and are under really low pressure circumstances. It's kind of like if you go out with a realtor and you have to make an appointment to go in and see a home. This way, the homes are open, they can talk with the builders, and it's not a pressured environment. Mm -hmm. um, you can you know, ask questions and get home ideas, so there's, there's all kinds of benefits benefits for coming to the parade and going on the tour. In addition to the parade, the Home Builders Association also plans a poker run, a kids Lego building contest, a container garden contest, a barbecue at Southwest Appliance, an open house at Smart Enterprises, and an opening cocktail party on Friday night. You'll also have an opportunity to win kitchen appliances, outdoor fireplaces, and other prizes. Tickets are $15 per person Kids 12 and under are free. Laughlin encourages you to buy your tickets before Saturday, September 20th. That's when the prices jump to $18. You can buy your tickets online at DurangoPOH.com. You'll also find maps, a schedule of events, and other information online. One home on the parade should be of particular interest to Durango area residents. The iconic Jakeway House on the southwest corner of East 3rd Avenue and 11th Street will be open to the public. Frank Ania with Classique Builders remodeled the 1888 home for the Allen and Lauren Semple family of Houston, Texas. He was particularly challenged by the removal of a brick fireplace to open up the Victorian living areas. Here's a quick tour. <laughs>
Durango Bank has been selected by the U.S. Mint to be the official exchange bank for the newest quarter in the America Beautiful series. A seri the series features a natural wonder from each state. Colorado's quarter depicts the Great Sand Dunes National Park in the San Luis Valley, and it was released to the public in a special ceremony at the National Park on September 4th. It is the 24th quarter to be launched in the America the Beautiful series. Carla Cortez, marketing coordinator for First Southwest Bank, said that more than 3,000 spectators attended the event, including more than 2,000 school children from throughout the valley. First Southwest Bank was on hand to exchange old quarters for the new. Um, the Great Sand Dunes was chosen as the site to represent all of Colorado, so that was a great um, recognition and honor for that national park to be chosen. Obviously we live in a beautiful state and there are many um, beautiful places but that environment was chosen as something very unique and uh, culturally important to the region and First Southwest Bank was asked to be the exchange bank for the, ex uh, for the U.S. Mint because we have a, a very long history in the valley in the San Luis Valley and um, it was a great honor to serve as the exchange bank. We worked with the U.S. Mint for several, min uh, for several months ahead of time, preparing some materials, and the event went beautifully. Cortez says the bank exchanged close to $15,000 in coins on September 4th. But don't worry, the bank has plenty to exchange. Plus, you'll receive a free commemorative card that goes with your new quarters. Quarters are available at the all First Southwest Bank branches. You can find the branches and branch hours at fswb.com. Ashley Dixon returns after the break with Building Homes for Heroes. The business update has been brought to you by First Southwest Bank and the La Plata County Economic Alliance. We're Randy and Micah Jackson in Alamosa, Colorado. Our business is Rustic Log Furniture. We've been doing business since 1996 and we started out building two by four porch swings and it turned into log porch swings and now we do log furniture for pretty much any room of the home. Our um, business has been steadily growing over the years and it's still continuing to grow. We ship to 40 states. We have approaching 200 retail stores that we furnish with our products and uh, we ship out a semi load every other day of, of furniture. As we outgrew our current facility we needed to expand uh, dramatically so I was meeting with the uh, people from First Southwest Bank, they proposed, you know, we go ahead and run the numbers on doing an expansion. They came in good, so we did it, and that's problem solved. So talking square footage wise, we've gone from a 12 by 12 tough shed to over 60,000 square feet. Given our experience with First Southwest Bank, I would definitely recommend them to other businesses. It's been great to work with someone local. delsey has been great to work with. She's really been proactive in helping us just facilitate the process of getting the loan. And so she really helped take a lot of stress away by making recommendations of what they can do to help us ease the stress and focus on what we really need to do. This, this is, is our there. there. Southwest Colorado Lifestyles with Ashley Dixon is sponsored by The Wells Group. We're back in the studios of KDUR Community Radio. I'm Ashley Dixon. Thousands of motorcycles descended upon the Four Corners area during the Labor Day holiday as part of the Four Corners Motorcycle Rally. And in addition to the revelry, one group used the opportunity to raise funds to build homes for our military heroes. Here's more. Well, every Labor Day for the last seven years, we've had a couple of uh, events going on for Building Homes for Heroes. This is a 501c3 non-for-profit organization formed in 2006 that gifts homes to injured, severely injured veterans coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq. I have a brother that was in the service, two brothers in the service, my dad, and I got a nephew now in the service. So it, it's all about them. They're the heroes. We just love the organization. It's such a great thing, and everybody needs to support. These guys need a home. So. Well, on Labor Day weekend, we get a lot of bikers coming into town, and so uh, we try and leverage that, and we have a couple of events going on. One of them is this one here at the Elks uh, Barbecue, uh, where we pour beer, and the, all the proceeds go to Building Homes for Heroes. Harley-Davidson, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday afternoons, 
There's fans, vendors, and of course, we'll be there pouring beer. And all the proceeds go to Building Homes for Heroes. And then on Sunday morning, there's the benefit breakfast. This will be our seventh year having it. Uh, burritos, juice, coffee, just prior to the uh, motorcycle parade and the classic car parade. Well, we came out because it's a great cause. It's been a lot of fun, and it's really helping families that need help. Well, it's a great cause. Uh, I'm a vet myself, but I've never had the, the sacrifice that these guys have had, so very happy to do it. We looked them up, found out that most of the money given is given to the cause. At least about 95% of the money goes to the cause. 94 and a half cents on the dollar goes directly to our admission. We keep it that way by having a chairman that makes zero salary and we only have nine paid employees. Last year we raised $12,000, obviously we want So uh, with all the events going on and a nice turnout and the generosity of all the uh, people attending these events, I think we'll do that. John and I would like to just thank Durango for helping Building Homes for Heroes on this Labor Day motorcycle weekend. If you'd like to know more about Building Homes for Heroes, contact John Sigalito at Durango Party Rental. The number is 259-6009. Next, the weather with Scotty Smith. Is it just me, or are the leaves around town already starting to change in color? Isn't it a little early? According to Ryan Cox, a forester with the Colorado State Forest Service, the leaves may, in fact, be changing a little sooner than normal. In the summer months, leaves appear green because of a chemical called chlorophyll produced by the tree. As fall approaches, the trees stop producing chlorophyll, which causes the tree to change in color. Cox says there are two varieties of trees around town that are starting to turn, the autumn blaze maple and the sensation box elder. Several autumn blaze maples, a fast-growing species known for its beautiful fall foliage, have been planted around town over the last 10 years. Native to the northeast part of the country, it appears the autumn blaze maple isn't doing so well in our Rocky Mountain environment. Our dry, arid climate is stressing the trees out, causing them to change color earlier than normal. The sensation box elder tree, a species better suited to our Colorado weather conditions, is also starting to change in color but Cox says it's typical for these trees to start changing in mid to late July. And while there's really no way to predict how good of a fall color season we'll see this year, Cox says the hot days and cool nights we've been experiencing lately will go a long way in providing us with a glorious fall season. Now for your up to the minute forecast. Southwest Colorado Lifestyles with Ashley Dixon is sponsored by The Wells Group. If you love Durango, grab this edition of Durango Magazine today. Explore Durango's vibrant art scene in a nearby city that disappeared. Discover what's happening on the Animas River and what Durango families do for fun with their kids. Dining guide in Durango's dream homes too. Captivating stories, award-winning design, and stunning local photography. Durango Magazine, serving people who love Durango since 1986. By mail, your hotel room, free racks all around town, and at Magpie's newsstand. Save the date for the 2014 Durango Area Freight of Homes, September 26th through 28th. This year's event includes a Home Under the Stars evening, fabulous prize packages, a poker run, and more. Don't miss Durango's premier homeownership event. Don't miss this year's Battle of the Badges, Saturday, September 13th at 2 p.m. Durango's own police department and fire and rescue go head-to-head -head in their sixth annual softball game. Admission is free. Food and beer garden on site with lots of wonderful local items in the silent auction. All proceeds to benefit Southwest Colorado Special Olympics. So bring your baseball cap and head on down to the Durango La Plata County Fairgrounds on Saturday, September 13th at 2 p.m. to watch Durango's best in action. See you there. First National Bank of Durango, committed to our community since 1882, where our friendly bankers help you achieve your financial goals. We put you first! Stop by one of our five locations or visit us online at fnbdurango.com. This portion of Arts and Entertainment with Ted Holting is brought to you by the Strader Hotel. No one can be part.
Hi, Ted Holtine with IDTD Arts and Entertainment in a place that's very near and dear to my heart. I'm in the KDUR studios on the campus of Fort Lewis College, and I am joined by a very old and dear friend of mine, Bryant Liggett, who is the station manager here at KDUR. Hello, Bryant. Hi, Ted. Hello. Thanks for coming by today. Uh, <laughs> my pleasure. <laughs> I should be extending the thanks to you. Well, consider it done. Well, the reason we are here, uh, KDUR is celebrating, believe it or not, 40 years here in uh, Durango and on the Fort Lewis College campus. My involvement here is, what, 19 years? I think yours is about 18, something like that. So combined, we still have not hit that 40 no, years. So no, it's really not. amazing. And uh, what is happening as we uh, enter this 40th year here at KDUR? I know there's always a membership drive, but any special events happening, or how are you commemorating these 40 years? Well, we've actually been celebrating 40 all year long through all of 2014. We had the official birthday party back in March, held out at SCA. Uh, invites went out to lots of current DJs, current supporters, community people. A handful of KDR old timers also came to that party. Uh, I think of in particular Rich Fletcher. Um, filthy Rich, who is still around the area <laughs> and still shows his face around KDR every so often. Um, that was the, the spring event as we move into our fall membership drive, which kicks off on October 3rd. Uh, we will just be celebrating the fact that, court, that KDR has been in this community for 40 years. Uh, to kick off the membership drive, we always have a guest DJ day where we try to invite uh, people with similar backgrounds, and we've gone after attorneys, and we've gone after the people from the breweries and media people. And this year, restaurants, et cetera, realtors. Uh, this year, the guest DJ competition competition will be uh, heavy hitters from KDUR throughout the 40 years. Former station manager Tammy Graham will be a guest DJ. Uh, Tom Bartels, who was a DJ back in the 1980s, hosting a Friday afternoon slot uh, that always had live bands, he will be a guest DJ. And he's still now doing Good Dirt Radio. Uh, yes, he is still going, doing Good Dirt Radio, which airs on this station. Sarah Baumgartner, who was a student and the program director here for a long time, she will be a guest DJ as well. Uh, in addition to you, me, um, you are the guest DJ champion for three years now. It is true. Um, so your tenure rolls over since you are the champion, but you have a nice history with KDUR as well. Like you said, being involved off and on for 19 years. You and I met in KDUR. Yeah, actually. The, it's, it, to me, it's a very important part of the Durango community. It's it's really where I was introduced to the Durango community, and I don't think that I'm alone in that. And I'd like you to speak a little bit too. How, and again, with 17, 18 years of experience behind you, how do you see KDUR being this, you know, community liaison almost? I mean, I've met more people in this town through this wacky radio station, and what, how do you account for that? Well, uh, I think it's, the radio station itself is this open door policy, where anybody can come up here and be involved. Are we a college radio station? Yes, our license is owned by Fort Lewis College. Uh, English students can get credit for doing work in here, making up the staff, if you will. And then there's loads of students that just do radio shows once a week. However, opening the door to the community as well to come up here and do radio programs, whether a community member is playing music as a DJ or hosting a public affairs program. It kind of brings both of those worlds together. So there, that brings up one of the most common questions that you probably get from people that don't know about the station. And certainly in my, uh, I worked here for about six years back in the dark ages. But uh, if someone comes up to you and says, what do you guys play? <laughs> you know, what, do you, what, what can someone expect to hear on KDUR? Honestly, I mean, just, you know, kind of run the musical gamut. Just off the top of your head, thinking about even the current schedule. Someone can expect to hear, and this is what we kind of tell all the DJs, is you're going to hear music that you're not going to hear on commercial radio. We focus on up-and-coming bands. We focus on independent music. Uh... Does that mean we're not going to play the Rolling Stones? We're not go we will play the Rolling Stones. If you walk in here and you want to play Satisfaction, I'm going to say no. But there's an obscure record called Goat's Head Soup that you could play the very obscure Rolling Stones cut off of. Mm -hmm. um, not a lot of people at this station are playing classic rock, although somebody might slide the Rolling Stones in every so often. Uh, you're going to hear hip-hop. You're going to hear uh, what the College Music Journal refers to as loud rock. Heavy metal, I think, is mm. what the kids used to call that. I see. Punk rock, alternative country, not new country, outlaw or alternative country. 
Uh, you will hear a Grateful Dead radio program and a college radio station and a community radio station should have, whether you like it or not, should have a Grateful Dead show. You will hear reggae music. You will hear bluegrass. You will hear classical. You will hear modern, what is called alternative, has taken the name indie rock these days. Guitar heavy rock. So you've just rattled off a lot of different kind of music. Jazz, blues, reggae, <laughs> world music. So if somebody comes to you, and says, I want to do this show, where do you say no? You know what I mean? Like, is it, all right, I want to do a Taylor Swift and Friends show? That's where I will say no. Uh, keep this in mind, that if it can be heard on a commercial radio station that is owned by a larger corporation, you will not hear that on KDUR. I see. So speaking of ownership, and uh, who owns KDUR? How do you... Uh, where does the money come from? The money comes from a handful of different places. So uh, I would say that the radio station is owned by Fort Lewis College because uh, the license granted by the FCC uh, is the name on the license is the Fort Lewis College Board of Trustees. Uh, we get money from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting through their program called the Community Service Grant. We get money from Fort Lewis College from student fees and we get money selling underwriting, which is advertising. The underwriting is the term for advertising in the world of public and community radio. Um, we get money from member support during membership drives, like the one coming up on October 3rd. Um, and we have certain special events throughout the year. Our Halloween event, we host uh, cover nights, which is a night of concerts of local music once a year, roughly. Um, we have an auction in the spring. So it's those little special events and the membership drives is where uh, we will get money from the community that goes into the, the operating budget here. Okay. And uh, so for uh, as we're getting close to wrapping this piece up, uh, radio has changed such a great deal. And whether it's commercial radio, satellite radio, uh, iPod, you know, and there's so many different ways to get music nowadays, Pandora. Why is KDUR still relevant here in Durango and even in a larger stage? Because uh, radio stations like this are still looked at as the tastemakers when it comes to new music. Uh, I think of the greatest college radio band uh, who released four or five records before they were picked up by commercial radio, and that was R.E.M. Mm -hmm. R.E.M. was ignored by the mainstream media and commercial radio for, uh, from 1970-something until about 1987 or 88. And yet so, they did well. And yet they did well. <laughs> we remain the, the, the tastemakers, and, and we're the voice for up-and-coming bands. You know, Not any like small local band can send their music off to... I don't know, some large market radio station in Denver or something, and expect it to be played immediately. That's not the case for a radio station like KDUR. Well, right on. Well, Bryant, thank you so much for taking a few moments to talk about this wonderful community resource, KDUR. Again, the on-air membership drive coming up October 3rd. If you would like to learn more about KDUR, www.kdur.org, 247-7262, if you've got a hankering to hear a song on the radio. Thanks so much, Brian. Thank you, Ted. That's it for this week's edition of Inside Durango News. We're looking for local community-produced video to put on the station. We'd love to see what you have to offer. Send us your video for broadcast to ideas at durangotv.com. For more info about what's going on in Durango, log on to whatshappeningdurango.com. Post your free event today and join the one-stop, easy-to-use events calendar for Durango. A special thanks to Brian Liggett and KDUR staff at Fort Lewis College for hosting us at this edition of Inside Durango News. I'm Ashley Dixon. Thanks for tuning in and watching local programming that matters. To soul Four a.m. in a parking lot Somewhere just losing control You're the type of someone that's so hard to find